Leeds Rhinos, Castleford Tigers and Warrington Wolves, three of the biggest teams from one of the biggest sports in Yorkshire, Rugby League. With many of the world's best players playing in Super League every week, there is no shortage of talent, but that talent is often getting lost as the grassroots game is suffering from a lack of participation. Phil Kaplan is the region's expert on the sport, having published 12 books on it, as well as monthly magazine 4020. Name's Phil Kaplan, third generation rugby league watcher. So my grandfather first started in the 1920s and it's been inherited down the, the family chain. Um, never good enough or, or, or had the talent enough to play rugby league, but have written about it since the mid 1980s. Want to always extol the virtues of the people that play it. I think they're, they are an astonishing breed of people and have some wonderful stories. There's an awful lot of books in here. We're in your shop now, surrounded by books, and there's this lovely little basket full of rugby balls with all the editions of your magazine. So it's clear to see where your passion lies within Rugby League. Initially, what are your thoughts on the, the very bottom level of Rugby League and the grassroots level? I think it's really interesting because all team sports at the moment have a participation issue. Um, that's a societal thing. Um, I think there historically has been a link with rugby league, obviously with the industrial working class north of England. Um, the industrial has certainly gone. The working class is debatable now as to how you actually define that. It used to be an obvious economic link and it isn't so much anymore. The game uh, was formed around schools. Uh, a lot of the schools have gone and the amalgamations into academies mean that rugby league might be an offer, but it's not the main sport of choice anymore. Uh, pubs and working men's clubs were very important, uh, they've disappeared. I think you mentioned as well uh, the top level, that went full time in 1996 and again that's created a different athlete which means that the, the clubs at the elite level are looking for different kinds of juniors coming through and it's quite an exclusive process now rather than an inclusive one. Leeds Rhinos legend Jamie Jones Buchanan is one of the sport's most decorated players, only the 14th player in the club's history to reach over 400 appearances, as well as representing England at the 2008 Rugby League World Cup. He knows exactly the importance of physicality when wanting to make it in this sport. I always tell the story that I was um, born on 1st of August, Yorkshire Day, which uh, I'm always been proud of. But that meant that I was the youngest in the year and uh, that brings about certain challenges and, and quite often that means that you're challenged in sport as well because you're a lot younger and smaller than people who were born in October, November, December. It's got relative age effect. It's a real true phenomenon. But I was really lucky because I was really big and from a young age sport was uh, the vehicle on which I lived my life because I was really well coordinated, I was big, strong, competed really well and just loved playing games and it was a way for me to make friends. And then when I was about nine years old, I moved into a new house and uh, the next door neighbours played rugby league. They were a big rugby league family. They had two boys who uh, were just marginally older than I were. And they were the biggest kids in the street, so they decided what we all played on a big patch of grass in front of our house. And that's how I started learning about rugby league. And I loved it. And this new sport lent itself to uh, people who were big. You know, it's quite advantageous to be a big kid playing rugby league. Uh, and that led me on to Stanningley. Stanningley Rugby League Club are based in the west of Leeds and are one of the oldest amateur rugby league clubs in the country. They're responsible for producing many pros over the years, including Jamie Jones Buchanan and two of his current Rhinos teammates, Jordan Lilly and Ash Golding. Jordan has himself been involved with the club from a very young age. My dad played here when he was younger and it's just sort of filtered through the uh, system. My brother played here. Um, my brother's 20, 26 now, um, and he played here, filtered through that, and then it just filtered. It's the rugby's been in the Lily DNA, really. It's uh, my granddad played it, my other granddad played it. Um, so it, it's one of them that sort of filtered right through. And you know, I remember coming and sat standing down here and watching my dad, my dad play, and watching the standing the first team uh, when they were at Fly Night in Premier Division, and just seeing him do so well, and seeing this all this packed and the banking packed and. You know, it was it great for the club. But Stanningley did have a difficult period over the past few years, with participation being at an all-time low for the side. Over the last probably four or five years, there's been a real struggle of getting players to training, getting players in week in, week out. 
The drop in the level of participation has been recognised by the sports governing body, the RFL, who have recently launched a review in the sports amateur level between the ages of 12 and 18. David Raybold is the competitions manager at the RFL and has been involved in the review. There is a drop off in uh, participation at those age groups. Um, we want to conduct a thorough review to identify what the reasons are behind that and if there's anything we couldn't do differently as a sport to try and um, address some of that um, drop off, whether that be different playing offers, whether it be um, different ways of communicating with players, lots of good things will come out of the review and it's important that we um, listen to what the players are saying and try to make sure we have offers that reflect the wants and needs of the players. Phil Kaplan recognised a regional issue with the sports participation by categorising them into traditional areas and development areas. East Leeds is a really traditional area. North Leeds is a development area. There are different uh, imperatives for each of those clubs. There isn't a one-size-fits-all. Um, so East Leeds will have uh, that historical tradition of families that have always been there and, and maintaining that. North Leeds, by comparison, would be how do you get people who are supporters of the sport actively getting themselves or their children involved in playing the sport. In order to bring more rugby league to the north of Leeds, Phil, who is also the chairman of the Leeds Rhinos Foundation, started a junior rugby league club, North Leeds Leopards, through targeting keen youngsters in schools. Foundations at Super League clubs are now going into schools and doing taster sessions. And the, the interesting thing then becomes, well, what do you do with the kids who you spent six weeks saying, do you enjoy that? And they go, yeah, I'd quite like a little bit more of that. Where do they go? Because they can't do it at their own school. So it was decided six years ago to form North Leeds Leopards in a partnership with the Leeds Rugby Foundation. Um, and uh, over the course of, of those five or six years, we now have six or seven teams. We did it a different way. Most clubs set up for open age first, graft juniors on after. We are only a junior club. If we can get enough juniors through to become an open age team at some point in history, that's great. But the idea is to keep feeding them in at five, six, seven. Keep having your under 11s, 12s, 13s, 15s and just give them a rugby league experience, teach them about being a team, going through the club together, making the club their own. Now from under 11 and below, the competitive element of rugby league is removed, with clubs teaching their players that it's not the winning, it's the taking part that counts, but quite literally with winners not officially recognised. Now as a winner of six Super League championships himself, JB Jones Buchanan sees a fault in these teachings. One of my main bugbears, the hierarchy, the people in charge of society, so schools and people run the, the governing bodies for sports, have given these kids the idea that it's not the winning, it's the taking part. Now I understand and realise that sports participation is really important for health and well-being and that's an element of sport but there's also the elite side of sport as well where there's a pathway for the elite kids to go down. Now because we've given this false bit of information to kids, they don't know what it means to lose, they don't know what it means to go through a little bit of adversity. Everything changes once the juniors enter the competitive game from the age of 12 upwards. Now, in order to understand why participation at this particular level is suffering, we need to understand the environment that the growing and developing players are put through. Dom O'Connor is a university student who knows the experience well as a former professional and amateur player for Warrington Wolves and Saddleworth Rangers. So, I remember I was there, played for Saddleworth at under 16s for one season. And at the end of that season was when the money contracts came out and that was when I heard the, the Super League academies. When that happens, they say you can't play for anyone else. You're playing for Salford, you're playing for Wigan, whoever it is. And Saddleworth knew this was, was gonna happen and their coaches were really keen to promote and push as many players into these money contracts as possible. So they were almost keen for their, their team to disintegrate. James Woodburn Hall shared a similar experience, albeit with more success, earning himself Super League caps with the London Broncos, but he still recognises the issues surrounding pro clubs and their hunt for the best players in the amateur game. In London there's one there's one team, one big team that can pick you up and then the rest of you have to play for the amateur club, but if you go to areas like Wigan, you, there's players being poached by Wigan, Lee, um, Squinton if they've got an academy, I mean, there's so many teams in one area, all the best players are being poached and then sometimes teams don't have enough players. If, if all their best players are being 
but playing for their scholarship team or their academy team that week, they could, they might not be able to uh, uh, field a side out, which is again is like it's detrimental for the game. So that game gets called off. The other players in the team don't want to play because week in week out they're not being they're not like, being put first. It seems like oh yeah, it's, it all revolves around a professional club as opposed to their hometown amateur club. I've seen a lot of guys. They gave it everything and they were desperate for it. And at 18, 19, 20, they've been let go or released from a club and they just didn't know what to do with themselves. Not many of them went back to their amateur clubs. You know, you had a few managed to filter down into championship teams or champ one teams, but not many went back to like grassroots level and a lot just stopped playing the game altogether. Like I'd say about 50% of them just stopped playing the game altogether and fell out of love with the sport. Um, which is, you know, that's a massive shame and it's not nice to see like lads who for years and years had a ball in their hands and were running around the field just throwing it and kicking it about and you know, you see them now, it's like, oh, you're still playing? No, I've not played in three or four years now, not since I left Saints, not since I left Wigan. I think, well, what's going on there? You used to love it. Paul Devine is a former professional for Bramley and understands the harsh reality for aspiring rugby league professionals. To play scrum half for Leeds, you've got to be roughly the best scrum half in West Yorkshire, if not Yorkshire, for five years above you and five years below. So in a 10 year bracket, you've got to be that best player because lads play for more than 10 years. So you have to be the best player in a 10 year bracket to get a shirt at Leeds in that position. Using that sort of maths, for every 10 year you play, you only need 17 players. Yeah, there's, there's 34 out there at 19 year old, so how many of them are gonna fit into that 10 year bracket? So the volume of players are tech who are good players, but at 19, 20, Wigan, Leeds, wherever, will burst the vast majority of them's dreams. Now we head back to Stanningley, which is also the home of one of the sport's biggest legends off the pitch, Brian Salden. As a former coach and treasurer, Brian has been involved in the club for over 40 years and won the Leeds Sports Award in March for lifetime achievement. He believes he has a solution to this issue of big academies reducing the size of amateur clubs by changing the contracts to a dual registration system where players can return to their former clubs if they aren't getting the vital game time at their new professional academies. Well, the thinking behind it is that we'd like to work more closely with the, the professional clubs, uh, work more on a dual registration. Uh, and not only that, try and get the players that go on to this 16 to 19 academy system in the pro game to get more involved, even if they're not involved as players, to come back and do coaching and uh, development work with some of the, the juniors. It keeps them involved with the club and hopefully, should they not make it, uh, they've got a club to come straight back to. And if they don't make it, like we have... Jordan, Lily and Ash Golden at the moment coaching to get involved in the coaching and again in the development side of Rugby League because overall I think Rugby League is short of quality coaches and for guys like that to bring their experience to uh, the amateur game you know benefits Rugby League throughout. The prospect of having these opportunities has divided amateur rugby products Dom and James. If I signed on at Warrington and they were paying me, I played for Warrington and that, that was my team. My impression was that Rugby League knew what they were doing and they had it nailed. This is your club, this is who you play for. And it, that way you develop with the same group of lads, you know how to play and it brought the best out in the players. I, I personally think it's a great idea as a player, you, uh, you want to be playing. And especially if it's back with your amateur club, it's usually most of the time it's with lads that you've grown up with, you've played with your whole life, so it's a great experience. Like all professional sports, not everyone can make it to the top. The Leeds Rhinos Trendsetters Initiative aims to get kids involved in and around the sport to raise its profile with the younger fans who want to get involved in any way they can. The face for the initiative is Leeds Rhino star Ash Golding. I think personally it's vital for the you know the next generation of players and also spectators you know to understand the game at an early stage to be involved actively at an early stage and actually voice your opinions and you know be able to tailor the experience 
to suit your needs and needs of likewise uh, like-minded people. So I think it's really important. Grassroots Rugby League is responsible for producing some of the country's best players, but there is still work to be done to ensure it continues to do so, and so that the sport can continue to flourish on our screens, on the pitch, and in the community.